Here you can see a basic refrigeration system with a compressor evaporator, thermostatic expansion valve or TXV, and condenser as the main components. The thermostatic expansion valve is mounted in front of the evaporator with the bulb and external equalizing line mounted on the suction line just after the evaporator. Generally, TXVs are used to regulate the amount of refrigerant liquid being injected into the evaporator. You do this by controlling the refrigerant superheat at the evaporator outlet. As a consequence, these valves are especially suitable for liquid injection in so-called dry evaporators with a superheat of the evaporator outlet is proportional to the evaporator load. Certain TXV versions can also be used to reduce the superheat in systems with capacity regulation performed by hot gas bypass valves. This is a schematic of a refrigeration system showing what happens with the refrigerant in the four main system components. Firstly, between point 0.1 and 2, the pressure of the refrigerant vapor is increased by the compressor. Refrigerant leaves the compressor is hot vapor at high pressure. Next, between point 0.2 and 3, the refrigerant is cooled down in the condenser, thereby changing condensing uh, from vapor to liquid. Refrigerant leaves the condenser as a subcooled liquid. Pressure is not changed in the condenser. Then, between point 0.3 and 4, the liquid refrigerant expands because of the pressure drop in the throttling device, thereby dropping in both pressure and temperature. Refrigerant leaves the throttling device as a mixture of vapor and liquid at low pressure. Finally, between point 0.4 and 1, the refrigerant is heated in the evaporator, thereby changing evaporating the remaining uh, liquid to vapor. Refrigerant leaves the evaporator as superheated vapor. Pressure is not changed in the evaporator. As mentioned in the previous slide, the throttling device from now on cold thermostatic expansion valve controls the superheated at the evaporator outlet point 1. Because the compressor to be damaged if liquid interjects through the suction connector, it's important to always maintain a certain minimum level of superheat. In front of the compressor, the simplest way of doing this is to use a fixed throttling device such as a capillary tube. This is typically done in, for example, household refrigerators and in other simple systems where optimization is not the selling point. A fixed throttling device can, however, only be affected for one set of operating conditions. This is where the TXV has a huge advantage. Because the TXV is a modulating valve, it will regulate the injection of liquid refrigerant in the evaporator in proportion to the actual operating conditions. This means it prevents liquid passing to the compressor independent of operating conditions for the expansion valve to operate. Correctly, it's important to always have 100% liquid in its inlet connection. To guarantee this, it's important to maintain a certain minimum of subcooling in the liquid line point 3. If this is not possible, flash gas may develop in the inlet of the throttling device and this will lead to the starvation of the evaporator because of a drop in the injected amount of liquid.
The TXV senses the bulb temperature at evaporator outlet. The bulb temperature is by means of evaporating charge converted into pressure P bulb which through the capillary tube is transferred to the top side of the diagram. The evaporating pressure P evap is led to the underside of the diagram either through the external equalizing connector or through a hole inside the valve. Together with the force from the valve main spring F spring to the two pressure achieve a pressure balance which represents the requested superheat or SH at the evaporator outlet. Depending on actual SH value, that TXV orifice will open or close if the load in the evaporator increases. The increasing superheat will in turn increase the bulb temperature or pressure. This will open the TXV orifice so more refrigerant is injected. If the load on the evaporator decreases, the decreasing superheat will in turn decreases the bulb temperature or pressure. This will close the TXV orifice so less refrigerant is injected. A throttling device is necessary in all refrigeration applications. In the most basic systems with little demand for optimization, a capillary tube may be used. However, as soon as optimization of energy or function is necessary, a thermostatic expansion valve TXV is used.